I believe it. No, I don't. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So the first item on the agenda after the pledge is the approval of the agenda. We do have some changes to the uh, Exhibit A hiring recommendations. So I will make that motion for 258 through 275 as posted in the red and Oh, that's John, are you going to remove them tonight? 275 and 276, yes, I am. Thank you. And then uh, 275 is <coughs> on the motion already. So I'll say 278 through 275 and 276. So then I'll just read 276. And then um, we're also moving under new business. Uh, item G will be removed from. Okay. Are there any other changes? All right. Then I move we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Roll call. Um, motion by Anderson, second by Piandi. That works. Uh, Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Monda? Yes. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mrs. Biondi? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. I get seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is reception of visitors. I noticed uh, that no one has signed in, so if there anyone is here who did not get the chance to sign in who would like to address the board, now would be your opportunity. Okay, we will continue on. The next item on the agenda is the President's Report, and uh, I don't have anything uh, to report or any new items going on. We are heading into uh, graduation, um, and I did find out this week that it looks like I won't be attending graduation this, this year. It's a great disappointment to me because it's one of my favorite things to do, but uh, Things have come up that are requiring me to be out of town, so I do apologize for that. And that's all I have. There's no committee reports, on, so we'll move to the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, as a reminder to the board, it's our first meeting of the month, so we won't have monthly reports from the buildings or the treasurer's report. Those will be at the meeting on the 24th. Uh, we did have one FOIA since our last meeting. That was a FOIA from a Sharon Page. Uh, regarding our teacher evaluation process documents. A uh, little update on the North Chicago <coughs> District 187 situation. I uh, got communication from uh, Dr. Martindale that they came to an agreement. They were, uh, if you remember some of our talk, they were trying to work with the charter, uh, uh, with the Learn Charter organization on trying to come to some agreement on the expansion. Uh, so there was some expansion, but not all the expansion. In any case, uh, he seems content that, at least for the meantime, the, the resolution that they found will help their situation. So, looks like there's some result. Yeah, I saw that. Aren't they also moving the LEARN, was putting those students into one of the buildings that they were closing anyway. Right. So, they were taking the building off their hands as well, which would help them out somewhat. So, they would have to dispose of the building. And I think they're going to share educating some students, it sounds like. Too. So, there's a whole... The whole big thing together is supposed to help them financially and just, I don't know, it's still kind of vague. But. And, and I do think that the, um, the other districts, the communication from, the, from us and the other uh, districts around us kind of help uh, bring an awareness to the situation that, you know, we're supportive of all of our uh, local school districts. Um, and at times, I know it seems like we're going to save money, if you will, but uh, ultimately we need all of our local districts to be strong. So. That's an update on North Chicago. I also want to give to the board a 
that's just a, a an updated copy uh, for you to either keep up in front of the IB meetings or keep wherever. And again, we'll, this is a living document. It's just a strategic plan. Remember, we we communicated that in October, probably maybe sooner than that, but uh, at the latest October, we'd have a large meeting and invite some of our uh, participants from our last strategic plan to, to see how we've been doing and knocking things off. And so there's kind of two two pieces of this document. One are the actual greatest indicators with the metrics, and that's the in middle section, if you will, that has all those greatest indicators with some expected performance, with some numbers on most of those, or some of those are also just things that need to get completed. And on the back page are some other items that, if you remember when we went through the strategic plan, we talked about specifically within some of those uh, theme areas, some items that we needed to accomplish either this year or in the uh, subsequent years. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because, like as an example, we're tonight going to have as our departmental report or our program report, a report from ELL, and that was uh, under one of the sections under student advocacy that we wanted to make sure we did a review of where we were at in terms of compliance, in terms of services for our ELL students. And so those are things that when we report out later, we'll also try to create some of the information from tonight's report and keep that in as an exhibit or evidence to support the strategic plan work, if that makes sense. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Julie, and she's going to turn it over to Chris. So, Mr. Jim Carrick, I think, is up. Okay. Well, that went down the line, did Ned, what I'm passing out right there is just a summary of the information that I'm going over for, uh, so you have that to, to review for your records. Uh, so you have kind of a, a synopsis of what I will be reviewing with you right now. So I'm here to provide uh, just kind of an update of, of our EL department, where we're at, some of the changes that we've made based on uh, where, where our needs lie with the department, some recommendations we're making uh, moving forward. Uh, some of the main objectives is you know, all there's uh, some define some key terms and assessments that kind of go along that are unique to that specific department and those services that we offer. I want to give you a snapshot of the services that we offer currently, uh, what the services that we offer will look like next year at FY17, uh, discuss a little bit of the interplay between English language learners and special education, and uh, also discuss other goals for FY17. So basically, and I want to put these out there because I know I'm going to slip into it when I'm, when I'm talking here, and I want to make sure that we all uh, know where we're coming from. E ELL stands for English Language Learner. That refers to students who are developing uh, language fluency in speaking, reading, and writing in English. Uh, they need additional support to achieve their full academic potential. It is not a learning disability, it is a language deficiency. So we need to support them so they can achieve at the level that they should be achieving. EL is an, an acronym for English Learner. This is actually Illinois State. Uh, the IS, ISB has recently updated their definitions in the language for next year, and they are actually dropping ELL as a title. It will be uh, shortened to EL, uh, referring to English learners. LEP is a synonym, uh, stands for Limited English Proficient Students. Uh, you'll see that occasionally in, in readings regarding EL, ELL or EL, LEP, Limited English Proficient Students. Assessments. Every uh, student when they register here at Warren is given a, a home language survey. And basically that survey just asks, are there any languages other than English spoken in your home? If the answer to any part of that is yes, then they have to take the WAPT test. And that is, uh, it identifies for us, are they ELL? Uh, do they need assistance? Where are the placement? What level of services do they need uh, coming in? Then as we move through the year, in January and February of every year, we administer the access test. This is a required test by ISB. It measures the academic progress of our ELL students. It's uh, their scores determine the level of services they receive, and it also provides the criteria and the benchmarks for exiting out of ELL as a service. There are two types of programming that we offer. Uh, TPI is a transitional program of instruction, and it's called the, informally called the Rule of 20. TPI is when you have 19 or fewer students that speak that same language in your district. Uh, the state recognizes that we can't 
have sheltered instruction for every single language because we may have several dozens of languages that are being spoken, but we do need to support our students. So if they have, or for us it could be Tagalog, or we have some students that speak Serbian, uh, those students fall under TPI, and we can locally determine what services are offered, but we do need to provide them with some support. TBE stands for Transitional Bilingual Education. That is when you have 20 or more uh, English learners enrolled from the same language. For us, those are Spanish-speaking students. Uh, and again, there's then once you move into TBE, there are some very specific requirements about what instruction we need to provide in the core areas, meaning English, math, social studies, and science. And they do need to be have uh, native language instruction available to them. Within TBE, there is a full-time designation and a part-time designation based on their access test score. So if they perform above a certain threshold, so exceeding, uh, exceeding the benchmark, they are classified as part-time. If they are below the benchmark, they are classified as full-time because if they're below the benchmark, they need to have more services. So what full-time TBE means for us is they need to receive sheltered instruction in all of their core classes, they might need to be enrolled in our newcomer program, which is a very is an entry level, very very basic English course. Just start like thinking like you're taking a foreign language for the first time. So that type of English instruction, and also be, uh, if if possible in their schedule, trying to get them into our Spanish for Native Speaker program. Part time TBE, so if they're above that threshold, uh, part time TBE students are required to have some ELL services but not all of them. So we want to make sure that those students are receiving appropriate support and while challenging them in the most rigorous courses possible. Currently, in our program, we have a newcomer program which uh, addresses English, uh, low-level English and reading skills, so developing their skills so they can move out of the newcomer program into our sheltered program and then out of sheltered into our gen ed programs. We have sheltered English and reading instruction offered for freshmen and sophomores. We have a literacy course currently uh, that enrolls freshmen and sophomores that supports content area literacy outside of the sheltered program. So of courses like Western Civ, uh, Health, Biology, Chemistry, uh, Government, Econ. Uh, we have this year, in, 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 throughout the presentation, anything that's new this year, I highlighted in blue just to kind of set it apart. So things that we added this year, uh, in November, we brought a bilingual aid on that was funded through our uh, Title III grant, which is our ELL grant, uh, to be in our support, be a support person with our Western Civilization classes and some of our bio classes to try to offer our freshmen in their gen ed classes some extra support in their native language. We implemented an after school tutoring program, again, that's grant funded, uh, where our ELL students can come and get help in any of the core areas after school on Tuesdays. They then can take the late bus provider. We want to make sure they have transportation for that. This year we are offering free summer school for our ELL students. We do it in some, offering uh, instruction in study skills, ELL English, and Read 180 to help develop the reading skills. So that's kind of a snapshot of where we are at right now. The reason why we need to look at what services we are offering and need to look at some changes that we can make to better support our students is really highlighted on this slide here. If you look at our enrollment from FY14 to just this year is a 227% increase in our ELL enrollment from 52 to 118. Next year we're going to increase an additional 20 students from 118 to 138. And while that number is a large increase, there's another layer to that. This is not, we're not talking about kids that have been in ELL programs and developing language fluency over years. This year, we had 27 students enroll in our district before November 1st from different countries that are brand new to the United States from non-English speaking countries. So these are 27 students that have little to no English uh, fluency. So that is a whole level, other level of instruction and support that they need that we need to provide for them. So at this, this year our newcomer program is, uh, is maxed out. Um, normally, in a normal year, we take in about five to seven of these students, just to give you an idea of, of how, uh, how surprised we were by the number of students that came to us this year. So we need to look at restructuring in order to better meet the needs of our students. We have to find new ways to support, uh, find some creative ways to staff, to make sure that we can uh, meet the challenges when our population grows up, increases, 
but also will be ready if our population of ELL decreases. So what we're looking at for next year, and the way that we want to break this down is by year in school, because the services change a little bit as kids move through our program, so we thought we'd look at it year by year by year. And the document I handed out, I highlighted this in the bottom in that chart. So for a freshman in the 2016-17 school year, the courses that they could potentially take, if you're a newcomer, ELL English and ELL Literature. And what is new next year is we are offering that at Eau Plaine. Currently, they come over here to Almond Zero in first period, then they travel back over to Eau Plaine and then pick up during second period, or pick up during, sorry, during third period at Eau Plaine. The, which is great that they get those services, but what happens in that, tra in that, uh, with that travel period is they lose access to Spanish for native speaker. They can't fit it into their schedule. So by moving it over to Eau Plaine, they no longer have that dead period in their day where they're on a bus traveling, they have access to that class. Uh, we offer sheltered English 1 and reading 1 currently. Next year we're going to offer sheltered instruction in Algebra 1 and Western Civilizations. So we'll have a specific sheltered uh, class in those two areas. We will, like I mentioned earlier, we're increasing access for Spanish for native speakers. Uh, and that is a huge thing. You'll see why when we get into the junior and senior year, why this is such an amazing thing, opportunity for our students and why it's so important we want to get our kids into that program. And next year we are offering sheltered biology, but we are offering that in a co-taught model. So we'll have a content uh, area science teacher paired with one of our ELL teachers uh, as support. Additional services that our freshmen will receive next year, the after school tutoring program will move to a full year program. And we are also in order to better serve our special education students that are also English language learners. We are offering a half period advisory, so like a supervised study where they can come on their opposite or half period lunch, they have half period lunch and they come and they will get uh, language support and content literacy uh, support from one of our ELL teachers opposite their lunch period. So that is what's new for freshmen next year. So the reason why, and if you notice, we didn't talk about the bilingual aid for the freshmen, because we, we're going to support the freshman with shelter, and that allows us to take the bilingual aid and use her to support our sophomores. So our sophomores next year will have access to the ELL English and Literature our newcomer program, uh, the shelter in English two and reading two. That reading shelter reading two is not something we've had to offer, but we do have it on our books. If, if we do need to offer, it's not something that normally runs for us. Spanish for native speakers. So in their sophomore year, they would take honor Spanish for native speakers two or regular native two. Uh, content, the literacy course. Right now, as I mentioned earlier, our literacy course addresses health, Western Civ, Bio, Chem, and Gumba Econ. That's a lot of classes to try and a lot of different needs to address in a 45 minute period. With our new structure, that is only going to address in literacy chemistry and government first semester and Econ second semester. So they really only have to address two classes in that. We're more targeted content areas, content literacy instruction which will make that a much more beneficial program for our students. Additional services that we are going to provide for our sophomores, like, as I mentioned, the bilingual aid will be in the government, econ, and chemistry courses. Our master schedule is being built. We work with our, uh, with our lead teachers from the Oak Plain Social Studies Department and Science Department to uh, find teachers that were willing to participate in this and to build a schedule that allowed us to get our sophomore English learners to have access to the support in all of these classes. After school tutoring will also be offered throughout the year for our sophomores. So again, if our sophomores need assistance, they can go after school on Tuesdays to get support. Junior year, one thing that comes into play during their junior year is there's a third year opt-in policy from, the, from ISB. Because ISB wants us to be moving kids out of ELL, that's the goal, is to get, build up their language skills and move them on. So after the third year, they basically have to opt in to continue to participate. So this applies for us, applies to students entering their third year at Warren, because we know they had we know they had ELL instruction in eighth grade, we know they had it with us freshmen, we know they had it with us sophomores, so now as they're going to their junior year, they need to opt in. And we leverage teacher recommendation, uh, to figure out who we should stay in or who would be okay opting out or, or exiting the program, and we uh, communicate with the parents to help make uh, help them make informed decisions in that regard. So the access test come into that, into that variation at all? As far as access, teacher recommendation, 
I mean, you know, and obviously if they're not <coughs> going to we, we want to keep them in the program. We're not going to just... Absolutely. Yeah, we want to throw them out there if they're not right. I just wonder if that test was utilized as a part of that evaluation. Yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, for our juniors, the newcomer program is I mean, always available for all of our all four years. Uh, for the junior year, they are able to take English 3 Intensive and U.S. History Developmental are the two content area classes that they, they can take. And our teachers that take those classes either have ESL uh, backgrounds endorsements or are Spanish speakers. So they have those supports in those classes. And then this is where you start to see the benefit of that native speaker program. If you come through our native speaker program at the regular level, in their junior year they move into honors Spanish course. So our English language learners are having access to honors level classes in their junior year. If they came through our honors native program, they actually are in AP Spanish 5 as a junior. So they are, they are in AP courses then in their junior year of high school, which is a tremendous opportunity. Um, as seniors, most students have either phased out of our ELL program or are now part-time TBE status. Uh, so when you're part-time, we have some flexibility in, in what we offer for our students. We do provide the newcomer, uh, the new, newcomer program as needed. We have a wide variety of English, uh, English selections for <coughs> seniors that they can uh, pick from. And then all of our native speakers, they come through that native program, AP Spanish 5, or an additional AP Spanish literature class uh, that we are in our second year of offering this year. Question. Yes. If, this, if they were a senior, but they had transferred here as a sophomore, just the third year option on the career side, that would yes. apply to their senior year? Yes. Okay. Yes. So special education. We, have, we do have a large number of ELL students that are also have uh, some sort of IEP uh, that, that we need to make sure that we are taking care of. So ELL students who qualify for special education must receive services from both departments. Just because you're special education does not mean you do not receive ELL services. Our ELL liaison will work with the IEP team to determine the appropriate services and placements. Um, it could be placement in sheltered courses. It could be they need to have a, a higher level of special education support, in which case they might need to have uh, access to that half period advisory course, for example, as freshmen or if there's other services that we need to decide. But special education works in the collaboration with the ELL department to determine the appropriate level of services, and then that decision is then written into the IEP. Specifically, if, we, uh, if ELL services are not offered, we are required by the state to document why we are <coughs> offering ELL services. We are allowed to do that, but it needs to be documented as to why that decision was made by the IEP team. In terms of professional development, obviously with this large increase we need to provide our staff with more tools and more strategies that they can use in their classes. Currently, uh, in, we, attend, we attend the IRC annual conference, uh, the Illinois Resource, Resource Center is what the IRC stands for, they have a, a three-day conference in December. Uh, there's an annual director's meeting that occurs early in the school year that our ELL, ELL liaison and myself attend to get the updates on any new changes in legislation and requirements for the year. And then there are a large number of free workshops through IRC that we're beginning to take advantage of. We actually had some teachers that attended some recently and are going to be presenting to our staff uh, at the end of the summer. Uh, we are encouraging more teachers to attend ELL-related professional development throughout the year. So as, as we come up with things, we're sharing them with departments that deal with a lot of our ELL students and specific teachers that have high populations of English learners in their classroom. We are looking into the IRC coming to present to our staff during the 16-17 school year. Uh, we are also reaching out to the IRC to discuss a potential year-long professional development plan to come in and work specifically with our ELL teachers, our teachers that teach our sheltered classes and our newcomer classes during the 16-17 school year. And we are working on developing a planning ELL training to occur the week before school begins in August. So all of this is great, but we have to talk about staffing because ELL is not a consistent population. It's a high mobility rate. Uh, it could be at a very high rate now, and it could go down, and then it could come back up. Um, so we have to figure out a way to manage this. And the, the, most, the best way to 
handle this or approach this problem is to make sure that our content areas also have ESL certified teachers so we can, if we have a lot of, you know, large, a fewer, uh, or we need a larger number of sheltered math classes, for, for example, we have a few math teachers that have an ESL endorsement. So if we need them, we can use their ESL endorsement. Then if our, our numbers in that sheltered math class go down, that's great. We just don't use their ESL endorsement for that year. So we don't have to hire a bunch of teachers to teach ESL classes and then we don't need you anymore. We want to make sure that we're handling this with the staff that we have. So we are encouraging our current WTHS staff to earn the ESL endorsement and already we have uh, some that have taken us up on that that are working towards it or are about to begin. Uh, we are, and now in our hiring practices we are searching for highly qualified candidates who also hold ESL endorsements. This was actually put into practice this spring. So as we post our positions, we do have a line in there that ESL, uh, ESL endorsement is preferred. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are finding highly qualified candidates, we want to find great teachers, but we also want to find if possible great teachers that also hold that endorsement. It's becoming a lot more common for kids to come out of school with that ESL endorsement in conjunction with their education license. Carol, is there uh, state reimbursement for services? Uh, we, we do have uh, a couple of bilingual grants, the TPI, TBE grant, and uh, I, yeah, that uh, we... Like we were talking the other day about uh, <coughs> reimbursements uh, on social workers, special services. Yes, we... Does, we does this qualify in our, in our that group? It would qualify under the grant, so when Willie and I are writing the grant, we make sure to write in the staffing, the after-school program, those type of things. It's a state grant, so we don't have to pay a federal funds rate, which is good. So, okay. uh, but uh, as we go through the budget process, we'll make sure that those, you know, those staff are identified as, as uh, in the ELL grants. Thank you. Sorry, Chris. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And, and just and just so everybody can out there, we made all of these changes and then we're able to add all these new offerings this year without adding any new teachers. That's great. So we're able to deal with the existing staffing that we have. Are there any questions I can answer for you? Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alden. We'll move along to new business. Excuse me. The first item on the agenda under new business is approval of administrative and non <coughs> employee compensation for the 2016-17 school year. I move to approve the administrative and non-union employee compensation for the 2016-17 school year as presented. Second. Well, I have a couple of questions. Certainly. Uh, one has to do with where the state is on the OR district. Are they current? Are they behind? They're, they're one walk behind, which is very good. Things very good. It is very good. So we've received three payments of our categoricals. Our general state aid is on, is on and uh, we expect to receive that as reimbursement job. Okay, and then my, my other question, um, since we're so new in budgeting for next year, is where is this additional basically quarter of a million dollars coming from? Well, you know, the goal of the strategic plan is obviously to have a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. So by using uh, you know, by going through the budgeting technique and really being very specific with how we budget, uh, we have, you know, in the last 10 to 12 years been able to really keep our fund balance at its strategic planning level. So it will be working with the 800 accounts that we work with and really specifically being very specific with how we, have, how we budget. So we're, we've gone through today a five-year plan, and uh, I think that's going to lead to the success that we need to do to fit 
all these pieces together. Now this is a decision for this year, and obviously we'll be working with the board to make decisions in future years. So generic, kind of a generic answer, but right, it's really a well, can I say something to you? I think sure. you, the thing that happens is there's no one thing that happens here in our process at Warren that, that predicates that this particular money is we saved or we did or whatever goes to the, the salaries as we did with the paying off of our you know unfunded liability we save some money as we do over here we save some money and so it all of it just rolls up into the plan and then as as we looked at the the five year budget it um, you know our salaries over the next five years based on projections stay relatively stable to our overall revenue as a variation between the two. So I don't think that that's, it's, it's a, a good question, but it's, there's not one answer. Because it's right. just, it's the process is what works. It's what we do, what we, we collectively do throughout the year that creates these opportunities. And I think that it's a testament to what everybody here does to try and save money where you can, but then spend money where it's needed. And I think and that's, I think that's why it works. It's, Sometimes it's, it's not as easy as others, and that's why we have a, the fund balance comes in handy because it, it does a little bit of this, but that's, that's why we have it, so we can do that. So, um, anyway. I, I understand that. It's just my concern is that it comes from sustainability. And um, when you listen to all the economists about the future of the economy in our nation, you know, they talk about us sitting on a bubble. And with the state being in the situation that it's in, and the potential of local districts having to fund all of the pension out of local money, um, I just, oh, you I know just what? have concerns. Yeah, I you just have concerns. That's valid. The you know, concerns are valid. I don't, I don't disagree with because the Because, you know, we, we only people. get our only real new money that we can calculate on is the CPI. And so, you know, I... It's working. So that it's the same prognostication we had in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. It's, it's always going to fall apart next year. And it may, but we can't, you can't plan for that every time. I mean, you can't, you can't, you, you have to plan to be as efficient as you can. And if you, if they truly say it's coming, then we have to make some radical cuts. Well, then we do. And that becomes a disastrous scenario, but we're not, luckily we're not there yet. And, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. And if we have to absorb some stuff, then we, we have enough of a fund balance to, to absorb some stuff for a year or two and try to figure it out. I mean, it's, I, uh, I agree with you that there's some uncertainty in it, but they're going to raise taxes, they're going to raise the state income tax, they're going to generate the money. The state's in a better position now than they were in 2009 and 2010 when they were spending at a rate they couldn't possibly sustain. At least they're trying to sustain it. I mean, they're, they're moving in the right direction. I don't have to agree with them, but anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay. I think maybe next year we look at this after we have our like total dollars and cents on what the total CPI number is. Mm -hmm. We have it. Pardon? We have the CPI for next year. I'm talking about for the 17, 18 school year. Which we do. We look at it. We have it in January. We get this past January. We get it for the next year. So well, then we, have we should it. be looking at what what we've already taken out of that additional money, right. and then know what our. Right. I, I right. just think that. We need to look at it differently in the next 17, 18 school year. Those will be, okay. be good discussions to have going forward. Yep. Next time we start the budget process in January, we can talk about that. Good plan. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Munda? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Bianchi? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dara 
Honor seven, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is the second reading and approval of the district board policies that we went over last meeting. We don't have any questions. We need a motion. I move to approve the second reading and approval of district board policies. Second. Roll call. Oh, discussion. Ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, shocking. Um, I just want to explain to the public why I vote no on the approval of the district board policies. You don't think they remember? I, I think it's important that they understand that we, in the past, I don't know if we still do, do not notify the parents of changes in policies until the next year in the student handbook. But we put the policies into effect right away, and therefore students are um, disciplined under the new policies that their parents may or may not be aware of. So that's the reason I vote no when we add, when we are asked to approve the uh, new district board policies. Great. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So if we had a motion? Yes. Yeah. And we'll a second. second. Roll call. Mrs. Conway. Yes. Mr. Drake. Yes. Ms. Campbell. No. Mrs. Bianchi. No. Um, Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Munda. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. So I have five yes and two no. Motion carries. Next item is a disciplinary recommendation for student 2000. 16-13 and the motion is I move to approve the resolution for disciplinary recommendation for student 2016-13 as amended. Second. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Drake. Yes. Mrs. Conway. Yes. Ms. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Biondi? No. Um, Mr. Munda? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. And Mr. Anderson? Yes. I have six yes and one no. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the payment of the bills. I move to approve the payment of the bills for 5-10-16 in the amount of $726,937.92. I'm clapping for you, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> Motion by Bianchi, second by Drake. Uh, Mrs. Conway. <laughs> yes. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Amanda? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. Mrs. Biondi? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. I have seven yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is the hiring recommendations. So I move to approve the Exhibit A hiring recommendations 258 through 275 as posted and 276 John Smith resignation. Second. Roll call. Motion by Anderson, second by Munda. <clears throat> Mr. Walls? Yes. Mrs. Biondi? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. Mrs. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Munda? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes. I have seven yes. Motion carries. The next item and last item on the agenda this evening is the regular meeting minutes and executive session minutes of April 16, April 26, excuse me, 2016, Jim, Jimmy Rasson. Can we um, vote separately on the closed and the open? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So I move to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 26, 2016. Yeah. Second. So, you beat oh, my call. Really? Roll call. Uh, motion by Anderson, second by Hadley. Mr. Munda? Yes. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. 
Mrs. Biondi? I'm sorry, I, I was talking with... Regular you. meeting, yes. Regular, no. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Walls? I abstained as I was absent. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. So, I have five yes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carried. I move to approve the reg these executive session minutes of April 26, 2016. Second. Roll call when you're ready. Uh, <clears throat> motion by Anderson, second by Biondi. Mr. Walls? I abstain as I was absent. Mr. Munda? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Ms. Campbell? No. Mr. Drake? Yes. Mrs. Biondi? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. So we have five yes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. Then uh, I move we adjourn the meeting. Second. Roll call. All right. Motion by Anderson, second by Munda. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Biondi? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Drake? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Munda? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. I have seven yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure as always.